Okay, today I'd like to give you a quick overview of what a geohash is and why it might be useful to you. So, what is a geohash? So a geohash is a way of taking a map of the world, in this case specified by latitude and longitude coordinates, and recursively subdividing it to you you get it down to whatever level you want, which represents a particular region on the Earth. So basically a geohash represents a region on the Earth. So here we see um, at the top level, we're going left and right, and then we're going up and top and bottom. So we, what we basically we're doing here is we're cursorily subdividing things, and we're assigning an address to the region. So here at the top level, the region address is 01. At the bottom level, the region address is 00. So this isn't a geohash yet, but this is what you get if you continued going down to a particular arbitrary level. So we're going um, splitting uh, uh, left to right and top to bottom. We turn that into a geohash by regarding this address in chunks of five, turning those chunks of fives into numbers by treating those chunks as base 32 numbers, converting those base 32 numbers into strings, and then concatenating them together to form a geohash. So here we have a geohash of length 5, which is covering a fairly large area uh, nearby Leon. Now what's a good, some, some good properties of geohashes? So here you see, uh, started off with a geohash that represents somewhere in Edinburgh, in this case just nearby the station, um, and then finding the parents of the geohash by simply removing the last character. So as you can see, it gives a very natural breakdown. Now it's not like a postcode in the sense that it, it's a geohash is tied to the space as opposed to particular, um, it's tied to the structure of space rather than places. So for example, it's not like a postcode. We can't make a postcode. We can make a postcode correspond to any region we want, any polygon we want, whereas geohash has a particular fixed structure. But nonetheless, it's a structure which is useful and is varies doesn't vary so much at different levels that, that you can't use it in a useful way. So it's hierarchical. Other, other nice things about it are that the, the strings are structured semantically. So here I'm just starting off with the same place in Edinburgh and finding the next geohash. As you can see, it's going to iterate through the space. If the left is going, this will basically end up telling the planet. Um, it will iterate through the entire space, covering every, 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 every location at a particular level of detail um, in a particular ordered fashion. Because it's ordered in that way, it means that you can take a particular geohash string and you can do things like find its neighbours very easily. And the key thing is you can do that without referring back to latitude and longitude. So in summary, going back to the hierarchicalness and the orderedness, is that you can easily find the parent just by doing a string, removing a string, and you can easily find the neighbours just by manipulating, manipulating the string that you have. So how might my... and it's also short and linkable, so as you can see. Um, now how might you use uh, a geohash? So I've used it in a couple of ways. So here I've used it to get an address at a very high level where I'm taking some tweets, um, I'm taking the, their latitude and longitude of where they're posted from, I'm getting a very, very high level geohash, in this case a two character geohash, and I'm using that to build a heat map of a number of tweets over a particular period of time. So that was a very useful way, way for me to turn what was a geographical problem into a key value storage problem. The other usage that I've used it for is um, as the primary interface element and the primary way to structure space when looking up images. So here, what I'm doing is Flickr, Flickr provides a way to, given a bounding box, it, you can actually look up all the images that are in that particular bounding box area. So I'm using the geohash to represent the bounding box and then I'm doing a bounding box query and then taking those results and putting them back on the map using a geohash. So here I'm using a geohash as the primary uh, way of structuring the space. Now that has some downsides in that, as you've seen in the hierarchical section, that the shape of the geohash, the aspect ratio, isn't fixed. So I'm having to do some slightly unnatural things here to, to scale the background um, to fit the geohash. So I think if it, the second version of the this app that we're going to it, uh, probably wouldn't do it that way. But nonetheless, it is actually a, a nice way to structure space um, and allows you a way to both match up the interface with the underlying query. And it means you don't have to do an awful lot of work yourself. However, the typical usage of geohashes is in 
the details of implementation of uh, way, ways to structure space and to make it fast to look up. So the one example here of Strava Rootmaster, um, they use it as a way to, uh, well, basically see, see, the, see the page, you'll see what they do. Uh, the GeoHash grid integration in Elasticsearch for the more typical usage where it's used or suggested to use as a way to speed up things. Uh, and you might say use this in a database as a, as a clustered index, that sort of thing. Uh, because you can you can go from a particular lat lawn to a geohash to the nearby geohashes and then turn that into an SQL query and, and assume you've got an index where you've, you've, you've indexed things based on geohash, it's a very quick way to find the subset of your database which geographically corresponds to the thing you're interested in. You still would need to typically, if you wanted to say exact distances, uh, you still have to have the lat long, but it means that you can do it by, by first culling down a lot of data. So that's a general overview. So if you want to see further reading, then I recommend you go and look at the wiki page. Uh, this one here, the GeoHash Intros would be good, I based most of my slides on those. Uh, this one here, Go For Your Range, is a very good way to just see the general structure. And GeoHash is a, is a nice little reference um, where you can put together a URL and see where it corresponds to. Uh, some credits for this presentation. So I, the library I use is no GeoHash. I actually use that on my apps as well. It's a really nice little library. There's quite a few libraries for different languages. Uh, credits to Leaflet and Steam Design for the maps are used. Again, I've used them in my main app, a real for the presentation, and they will be giants for the title. Um, and this presentation lives here, so if you want to go and look at what I've done in my hacky JavaScript, then feel free. Thank you very much.